Hey everyone, it's Nick from Help Scout. We had a great AI webinar today. Problem is we didn't hit the record button for about the first nine or 10 minutes. So I'm gonna re-record some of the slides. That's why you don't see my co-panelists with me here. I'm gonna re-record the first part. Then we will sort of splice it together with the rest of the webinar. We had a lot of great Q&A, great demo of the product. Uh, but just want you to know that I'm re-recording a portion of it because we just kind of forgot. So sorry about that. We will splice everything together. Let's get going. So thank you so much for joining us today. We're here to talk about our perspective on AI at Help Scout, show you some of what we're building. But first, let's meet our panelists. Allison Groves is a member of our customer support team. She has been at Help Scout for 1,647 days, but who's counting? And she's done a wonderful job. Matt Patterson, we know him as Pato because Aussies like to talk funny. Uh, Matt has been with us for 2,641 days at Help Scout. And myself, I'm co founder and CEO at Help Scout. My name is Nick. So happy to be here today. I just so happen to have been at Help Scout for 4,575 days. We don't really consider ourselves experts in the field of AI. However, we do consider ourselves experts in the field of customer support. And that's the perspective that we're going to bring to you today. So collectively, we've spent about roughly 9,000 days or so thinking about customer support. And as a company, we've been building products, creating content, and talking with growing businesses about this topic for many years. We're happy and honored to be part of this community with you. Now, many of you use Help Scout in your business today. Thank you so much for being a customer. But for those of you who haven't worked with us before or maybe don't know of Help Scout, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company and our mission because it strongly influences our perspective on AI. I have a few slides to kick things off and then we'll be happy to take some questions. We'll do product demos and then we'll take some more questions. So feel free to add questions at any time in the Q&A. You're watching the recording. You can't do that. So I'm going to move to the next slide. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, Help Scout is a customer support platform. We've been serving growing businesses just like yours for the last 12 years. We're also a mission-driven business. In 2019, we became a certified B Corporation. We're also a proud Pledge 1% member. That means we've pledged 1% of the company's equity back to the community. Put another way, we founded the company with every intention of leaving the world better than we found it. Our goal is to pursue a balance of profit and purpose over the long term. And that really extends to our discussion today. So at Help Scout, our mission is to empower businesses to delight more customers. And if you really give that some thought, it's already pretty different from a lot of other products in the market. Our mission is not necessarily to reduce your support costs. It's not to deflect more tickets. It's not to build the most features or make it difficult, more difficult than it needs to be for customer-facing teams to work their magic. Our mission is to empower businesses to delight more customers because that's the key to your long-term success as a business. When you have a business that's consistently delighting more and more customers, your business is thriving without a doubt. And one thing we believe at Help Scout is that customer delight is your most effective marketing channel. Your support team is having more conversations with customers than anyone else in the company, and they're at the heart of this channel. The problem is it's difficult to quantify the value of a delighted customer, and especially this day and age, if you can't measure it, a lot of times we underappreciate the value of some of these channels. So the customer support team doesn't typically get the credit or investment that they deserve. But make no mistake, your customer support team is the engine that's driving word of mouth referrals to your business. When you can get it right, it drives significant evergreen growth. And this isn't a hypothesis. This is something that we've been living for the last 12 years, building our business at Help Scout. We certainly can't outspend our competition with ads. Investing in this channel is actually the best way for us to grow our business. And that's why. We've started building or we've, we've built a world-class customer support team. We've empowered them to do what they do best. 
We use the heck out of our own products. And to this day, our support team drives a tremendous amount of customer delight for the business. I mention these things because they really color our perspective on AI. When you're designing a product with a singular focus on delighting more customers, it ends up looking and feeling very different from other products available. And I suspect our approach to AI will probably also look different as a result. So I'm happy to tell you today <laughs> that we are finally excited about AI and customer support. It certainly took us a while. I'll be the first to admit, AI has been a hot topic in customer support for ages, particularly from the, the years of 2015 to 2018. It seems like the discussion really ramped up around chatbots. That was like the next big thing. But let's be honest, chatbots and other AI tools that came out up to this point have never really been about delighting more customers, have they? These tools were actually just designed to deflect. Under the covers, the technology was pretty rudimentary. A chatbot was just a modern equivalent of a phone tree that you have to go through in order to call the credit card or cable company. It's not smart. It's not the best tool for the job. It's frustrating to use, and it ruins your brand in the eyes of customers. Quite simply, that just doesn't align with our mission as a company, and that's why we haven't built any chatbots. But in the last eight months, believe it or not, advances in AI have started to change everything. The catalyst for this change is large language models, otherwise known as LLMs. Others use the term generative AI. That's also correct. LLMs are sort of categorically part of generative AI. We've all seen the amazing things that tools like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and others can do. These tools are all powered by LLMs. And we may look back at this moment of change in the same way that we look back at the early internet. I believe it's fundamentally going to change the way a lot of us move through the world. So what makes LLMs so great? We're not gonna dive into the technical details today, but we've identified three key benefits of, a, of LLM, specifically as it pertains to customer support. The first one is that they can read and write incredibly well. And if you think about the work that we do as customer support teams, there's a lot of reading and writing. That's the majority of the work that we're doing. So if an LLM is excellent at that, it's probably the right tool to solve a lot of different tasks. They also don't require a whole lot of training. So <clears throat> up to this point, we've tried a bunch of different POCs with machine learning, for instance. And that's a technology that can be incredibly powerful, but it requires a lot of data. As a matter of fact, we did the research when we were building out some of these POCs, and we learned that 95% of our customers don't really have enough data for machine learning models to really have a significant impact on their business. So thirdly, they, also, they have many different use cases. So back in February, I worked with a small team to build things with LLMs over a 30-day period, and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, that was a really good time. And at the end of the 30-day period, we had seven things that we were pretty excited about. There's all sorts of ways that we can apply the benefits of LLMs to the product itself. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But we basically had to rewrite the roadmap based on what we learned in that 30-day period. As a result, it's my belief that we're entering the golden age of customer delight. And that's something that's very exciting to us. In the coming years, I believe every business will have the opportunity to make their customer experience vastly better. In other words, these tools will give customer-facing teams and businesses even more influence over their most effective marketing channel. And that's really exciting to us. We're eager to embrace this technology and help businesses make the most of it. So what are we doing? In terms of the Help Scout product roadmap, we're focused on solving two different types of problems. The first is giving support professionals more leverage. And that's more of what you're going to hear about today in the demo from Allison. AI Summarize and AI Assist, they do exactly that. They can give your team superpowers so they can work smarter and faster, which ultimately enables you to delight more customers. The second area of opportunity is to deliver better self-service experiences to customers. 
Now, solving this one is more complex. It's going to take us a little bit more time, but we're actively working on this one. The current self-service experience is based on search. So you type in your question and you get a list of articles that may have the answer that you're looking for. The next generation experience is in fact more like a chatbot, but smarter than all the chatbots that we've used up to this point. So just forget all the historical <laughs> chatbots, but customers can actually ask the very same question. And instead of returning a list of articles, the LLM will actually read all the relevant articles and provide the customer with a specific answer. It's faster. It's a more delightful experience. There's no more sifting through articles. The LLMs are able to do a lot of the heavy lifting to answer tier one product questions. You can imagine a tool like this giving your customer support team leverage as well. We believe the process of onboarding a new support team member, for instance, will go from months to weeks or even days thanks to tools like this. If the self-service experience gets better, it also makes your support team better too. So these two things really feed off of each other. It frees up the team's time to focus on solving more complex and challenging issues. It enables them to vastly improve response and resolution times. In summary, everyone wins, customers and customer support professionals. So that's how we're thinking about AI. Let's take on some of your questions and then we'll jump into a demo with Allison. Pato, what questions do you do we have that you want to answer? Yes, we do have a few questions. I'm going to get to those. Uh, I'm going to sneak in my own question first, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, I know that every time technology changes, there is some impact on jobs. And, and I, I would like to know, what do you think AI is going to do to the customer service job market for people you know, like us on this call and sure. listening? Well, no doubt this is a community we're very passionate about and we're biased towards probably. Uh, but in my experience, because I've talked with a lot of our own team members, uh, our own C team members, I think I'm going to their team meeting here in a couple of weeks, but you folks don't give yourselves enough credit for the work that you do. The work that you do is tough. Uh, and I know that because I still do a, a weekly support shift. I get in the queue and answer customer questions and it is unbelievably techni technical and hard. So I think that LLMs are going to hit a ceiling before they start to disrupt like the really meaningful work that our, that our C-team members are doing. Sorry, I, we, we call them C-team at Help Scout, that our customer support professionals are doing. LLMs are going to get really good at solving tier one support questions. But in my mind, this really just unlocks uh, more opportunity for folks in the queue to level up and even earn more for the work that they're doing because the work that they're doing is effectually just much more challenging and difficult. So we're actually quite bullish about this technology elevating customer support uh, in, in the realm of the company. Because again, if it's all about delighting customers and delighting more customers becomes even more quantifiable through these tools, then customer support's gonna get elevated like we've always wanted it to be. It's going to get some of the credit that it deserves. So uh, we believe there's a lot of positive things that are going to come from this. Absolutely. I think, yes, yes, there will be change, but that just, it's not going to get rid of the role of people. And this is just 100%. a little bit different. Uh, all right, let's get into some questions. A couple of people just wanted to say they like the newsletter. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay, by the way, sorry. If you're not subscribed to Pato's newsletter, we we got to, we got to, put a link in there. You've got to be subscribed to, to, to Bato's newsletter. It's not overly Help Scout centric. If you don't use Help Scout, it doesn't matter. You must use, you must be on this newsletter every week. It's great. I read it. I love it. Thank you. Uh, Eric would like to know, is there any chance we get uh, automatic AI language translation within Help Scout in emails and chats? You know what? I've got a sneaking suspicion that Allison may have a little something to say about that. So uh, it's it, it will be part of our AI Assist product uh, that we'll demo in just a few moments here. Uh, great. Now, Elena says that uh, they're having some, maybe some challenges with the docs search and that the right thing's not showing up. I'm wondering if there could be AI powered uh, ability to you know show the right help document for the person uh, as they're looking for help. 
Yeah, there's no doubt that, uh, and and that's the that was sort of the 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 way that we thought about this problem was what's the best user experience or customer experience when it comes to finding a solution that you're looking for, and search is typically better than like a a V1 chatbot, let's say, because those chatbots are not necessarily very smart, but. Uh, in the new world, you're able to feed content to an LLM in, in such a way that it can do a lot of reading really fast, and then it can write a, a response uh, very quickly that answers the, the question very specifically. And so uh, I do think that uh, a chatbot type UI that you would get in chat GPT or anything else is going to, to become a better user and customer experience than just search out of the box. Uh, in many different use cases. And I think trying to find knowledge about using Help Scout or any other product or, or any sort of e-commerce use case, anything like that. I think, I think the chat bot sort of UI is going to end up being just a a better experience for sure. Uh, Related actually, Vincent is asking is, will we as customers of Help Scout, would we have to train the AI ourselves or is that something that Help Scout is going to do for us? Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about LLMs. Uh, if you're familiar with how OpenAI works, for instance, uh, OpenAI, those they they run the models that are powering a lot of the features that you're seeing from various companies these days, uh, and they they are pre-trained effectively. So uh, what we can do is on the fly uh, make sure that the LLM has the information that it needs, such as the content of your knowledge base uh, to work from, or even relevant conversations to work from. And then that training happens sort of on the fly, uh, but you don't need a whole separate model specific to your company. That's not necessarily how it works. And so I mentioned earlier with machine learning models, 95% of our customers just don't have enough data to train that model. And in LLMs, 100% of our customers can benefit from them as long as they've got a knowledge base, for instance. So that's something that makes us really excited about the future. Uh, And can you speak to the kind of security and data privacy issues around what we're providing back to OpenAI? Yeah, so a couple of things. So one, all of the AI features that we are building today are not HIPAA compliant. So none of our HIPAA compliant customers have access to those features as of yet. However, we do see a path to being able to sign a BAA with OpenAI or any other vendor of that nature. So there is a path. The way that these work is that you're effectively sending OpenAI or whatever the LLM is, you're sending them some data on demand and that data is not stored at rest, right? So the data is basically used to create a response and then it's discarded. So by way of using OpenAI's models, it doesn't mean we're actually adding to or training those models. They're not using any of that data. It's stored very temporarily and then discarded as soon as the answer is sent back. So we feel really comfortable about that. They are still a uh, data, customer data processor. We still got them uh, in all of our security policies and everything like that. But uh, unlike some of our other vendors, they are not storing any data at rest, and that gave us a lot of confidence. Thank you. Um, have we thought about whether we might have AI speaking directly to customers, as in generating responses to customers? Um, so we have we have built some uh, POCs around this. Uh, it's a very complex challenge, and if there were AI writing responses directly to customers, uh, particularly like email responses or something where you would expect to be speaking with a human, then I think the furthest we would go, at least based on my understanding now, would be the AI would would draft a response. Uh, And then a human would take a look at that response, make whatever refinements they, they, they felt were necessary, and then go ahead and send it so that it's still comes from a human being, that personal touch is still absolutely present and there. Uh, But at the same time, you get a head start on the draft. So uh, that's probably the ideal situation in something like a mailbox, uh, where you've just got somebody that's expecting a human level interaction, you want to make sure that you live up to that promise. 100%. Uh, 100%. Uh, there's a few people asking questions around the use of AI in other areas, like would we use it for reporting or tagging or um, you know, suggesting workflows, that sort of thing? 
You know, that's the really amazing thing about LLMs. I mentioned that there's a bunch of different use cases for this technology. Effectively, if you can write a good prompt, which is what you would send over uh, to the LLM, anything is possible. So you can imagine uh, anywhere where, a, where you would actually do a search to accomplish a task, uh, would it be better to actually send that task over to an LLM instead of a, a search index? So uh, there's a number of different things that you could do, but you could imagine, so I, I think the, that you mentioned workflows. You could imagine saying, hey, I want to create a workflow that does X. If, uh, if, a, if the subject line includes this, I want it to have be tagged as X, and then I want it to be moved to a folder, and then I want it to add a note. Well, if you just wrote that out, you can imagine us being able to interpret that, because again, an LLM is really good at reading and writing, so they're going to be able to interpret that and for us to be able to just, boom, turn that into something that is a real workflow that you can then look at, make sure it's right, and hit save. So uh, the possibilities are, are truly endless. That's what really gets us excited about the technology. All right, I think we're going to move on before we run out of time. Uh, cool. Someone ask LLM, what does it stand for? Can you remind them, please? Yeah, large language models. And uh, feel free to, to just type that into Google or your search engine of choice. And there's lots of dense articles that you can read about LLMs, but uh, very, very exciting technology. I will say that I do think that technology has somewhat of a ceiling uh, because it's so good at reading and writing. People sometimes uh, think that LLMs are capable of way more than they're capable of. Uh, and that's why when we get into the jobs question, it's like, Guys, I, I really don't think this is going to replace your job. You're you're way smarter than the LLM, I promise. <laughs> so, uh, but it it is a boon for creativity. It will it will uh, help help kind of sit sit next to you and make sure that you can do an even better job. So, uh, yeah. Uh, there were there are a few other questions um, around kind of the specifics of of how it will work and whether it could read documents and that sort of thing. Um, whether it can read, you know, your own documents or your own information and, and how it technically works. Did you want to speak to any of that? Uh, I, so I, I'm not seeing the specific questions, but uh, it's it's probably worth doing a little bit of research just on how, like I would I would research open AI. That's typically uh, the models that everybody is, is building on top of today and get a sense for what their data security policies are. They, this, is, this is public information, but uh, we're, we're generally very comfortable uh, oh, yeah. with... Sorry, just just to clarify. Sorry, I yeah. misphrased the question. People okay. are asking, like, if I've got my own answers, we've got you know years of history of our human customer mm -hmm. service people answering questions. Does the AI have access to that to understand how we would respond to customers, or is yes. it? It's, yeah. yeah. So the short answer would be yes. Like you can feed uh, the LLM whatever information you want as part of the prompt in order to make sure that it can answer the question correctly. Uh, there's this funny term called hallucinations. I'm sure many of you are aware of where LLMs just make up stuff. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of clever engineering you can do on the back end to minimize those outcomes. And so, uh, yes, you can you can feed it pretty much any type of uh, data. It doesn't have to be structured. Uh, just text, English uh, will work just fine. And it's it's very good at interpreting it. Okay, last question, and then we'll get to Allison. But um, can you talk about... Uh... The pricing, like who is this AI tools? Who's it going to be available for on HelpScan? Yeah, so uh, Summarize is currently available for our Plus and Pro customers. The other feature that Allison's about to demo, Assist, is going to be available to all customers. And we put a beta tag on both of these things for one simple reason. We want to get a good sense for usage of the product. So behind the scenes, we are paying on a usage basis for these tools. So depending on how much you're using Summarize or how much you're using Assist, behind the scenes, we're paying on a usage basis. And so eventually we, we're gonna wanna work up to a business model where we can just align that with usage. So the way that I see it probably playing out is that each plan would include uh, a generous portion of uh, usage for AI Summarize and AI Assist, and then an above and beyond a certain threshold, we would just start to charge you marginally just because we're paying that bill behind the scenes. And so we're just trying to, to align with the business model uh, that we're paying in terms of the API. Thank you. Now, Allison's about to give us a, a little demo, but I just briefly wanted to mention some of my experience 
in doing actually support and looking at the queue and you, know, you see an old conversation that's sitting at the bottom and there's been six different people who have tried to answer it or have worked on it already and you open it up and it just loads and loads and loads and that scroll bar gets tinier and tinier as you know all of the different history comes in and thinking about oh, I'm gonna have to go to the bottom and then read my way all the way through before I can even start to understand what the next thing is and then you see that someone has written a good summary and you're like it's, it's a manner from heaven that has arrived for me or whatever your you know non-religious equivalent of like uh walking past a vending machine and some peanut m&ms come flying out to you you're like yes amazing those summaries are so valuable, but uh, they're very often not in there, either because everyone's just too busy to do it or because it's not worth spending that amount of effort for every conversation. Uh, but they're really super helpful, which I think is why we're so excited about this particular feature, which Alison is going to show us right now. Alison. Yeah, it's that's a perfect segue because it's just right here. <laughs> so uh, like Matt mentioned, I'm sure many of us here again, I do, I'm on the support team at Help Scout, so I do this all day, every day. You open up that email and it's like, oh no, <laughs> this is a half hour worth of reading, right? And there's like 10 or more replies on that email. And the time that it takes to get up to speed on a long conversation can take large chunks of time away from, you know, time that you can actually spend crafting a good reply, sending that reply, you know, taking really good care of your customers. And that's where summarize can really, really help. So with one click of a button, it's this button right there, uh, we can use AI to quickly read through every thread within a conversation and sum it up for us in just a few bullet points. Um, so with that, I already have so much context of the entire conversation and overall issue without having to spend all of that extra time sort of context switching and getting up to speed. So you can see here when viewing an individual conversation, uh, you'll notice that new icon I've got it highlighted there at the top. Um, and that, you know, is kind of there along with the rest of those conversation options that we're all already used to by now. And we have this conversation here that I've already summarized. So if I was to scroll down it, you could see it's about six or seven threads long. And when I go back up to the top here, uh, the AI has summarized it for me in those five bullet points there. And so even if I want to decide I want to spend all of that time reading through the conversation, my understanding of the situation will be higher because I'm already have that sort of summary and knowledge and therefore start with a deeper understanding than say just like jumping down to the bottom and trying to read through it all. So once you have summarized a conversation, it will that summary will always be at the top for you there, but you can run it again should more threads come in on the conversation. And uh, because of that, the button is grayed out like you see here right now, but the option will become available again when any new threads come into the conversation. So if we do this sort of live and in the moment, um, you can see I've crafted a reply here. I'm going to send that reply. And then you'll see I've got this one new thread so I can update that summary. The AI will run again and uh, re-add that conversation. Um, this might not be the best example because I was literally just doing a little bit of follow-up there, but just wanted to just kind of show how that works. You know, even if you've already run it, you can continue to run it again should that conversation uh, get longer and longer. And we hope that with Summarize, you can not only, again, save all of that time, but gain perspective and understanding on longer conversations by having more context, as you can see, just right there at the start. And like Nick mentioned, this is um, available now uh, for all of our customers who are on our Pro or Plus plans. You'll see that option there. Again, it's right there at the top. Um, on any email conversation that you're reading through. And next up on the AI front for us is a tool that we are calling Assist. Um, and so all of the text editors within Help Scout will have Assist coming soon. So Assist will give you the option to do the following with any text that you have written. So I'm gonna highlight this text here. You can see I've got this new button, uh, or actually all of this is new. This is uh, one of our brand new editors here. Uh, if I click on that, it's gonna give me all of the options that I can use with Assist. So you can fix spelling and grammar, 
You can make it longer, make it shorter, make it friendlier, make it more professional, or we can even translate it into 14 different languages here. So we're talking about uh, our replies. So anything that you write within any editor in Help Scout, these uh, options will be available for you there with Assist. And we know that you know most of you spend the majority of your time within the conversation editor, like we are here. But if you publish docs articles or create messages or saved replies uh, to use for later, you will have access to Assist as well. And for someone like myself who tends to write a little too casually and friendly sometimes uh, of a response to customers, I can use the option here to make my reply more professional. Uh, and then I can stress less about, you know, the actual words and phrases that I personally like to use. And just kind of let the, let the machine clean that up for me a little bit more. So I've highlighted my text here. I'm going to hit make it professional let uh, things kind of run in the background. And then you can see very quickly that that has changed things up for me. Might have to do a few little quick formatting options right there in the moment. Uh, but just with that, you can see how it transforms, you know, that sort of very casual thing that I had written into something that was uh, far more professional. Uh, and you can also use, and I think I mentioned this just a moment ago, you can use assist with docs articles as well, which I know will be very, very helpful to a lot of folks. Again, if we highlight any of the text here, we select assist. Um, I think for a lot of folks, there's two really big things that are going to be helpful here. One is fixing spelling and grammar, uh, which will save you a ton of time as you're sort of writing or updating docs articles. You can always make sure that those are up to snuff when it comes to, to your spelling and grammar there. But the big one I think here is translate. So with assist, you can translate any, obviously anything that you write within any of the editors, but for docs, I know a lot of you out there want to create articles in different languages for folks. So you can extend your support out to as many different customers as you can. And translating with Assist um, will also be really helpful when it comes to customer emails that arrive uh, because you can send those in a different language as well. And once you have written your reply, or as you can see here in the Docs Editor, I can choose Translate see all these different options here. So we have Chinese, Dutch, English, Filipino, French, Korean, German, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, there's 14 of them, kind of list goes on and on there. But let's say I want to translate this into Spanish. I'll just click on that, let it go there for just a second, and then it's done. So AI uh, Assist is getting its sort of final polish with our product team, uh, working out those last little kinks there, uh, but we hope to have it ready for everyone very soon. And so stay tuned uh, to all the channels that you get your Health Scout information from, and we'll let you know as soon as this is available. And as I think Nick mentioned this as well, Assist is going to be available to everyone uh, across any Health Scout account, no matter what uh, plan you're on. And uh, like I said, we hope to have this available for everyone really soon. So with either of these features, if there's something you would like to see or questions you have you want to dig deeper on, we're always here to help. Uh, again, you'll either talk to me or one of my awesome teammates. Uh, we're around 24 hours a day. I got teammates all over the world. And so if you need us, always email us help at helpscout.com and we can dig in on any of those sort of AI things that you might want to get in a little bit deeper on. Fantastic. Thank you. A lot of excited people in the uh, the chat there. I'm going to go through and find some questions. Uh, if you've got a really specific question about like, it's not showing up in my account or that sort of thing, help at helpscout.com. That's probably the best place to get that help because we can dig in with you on the specifics of it. Uh, but we'll try and get into some, some broader questions here. Uh, okay, let me just browse briefly. <laughs> I think I saw one about just being able to opt out of these features. Yep. Uh, Allison, I, I know that you and the support team have have worked through this quite a bit. I think you have to email support, yes. but we're happy to turn it off for you. Yeah, uh, you also don't have to use it, but if you want to make sure that nobody in the company is using it, we can we can turn it off for you. Right now, I do think you have to reach out to support for that. That that's right, and I'll, I'll also add. I know you touched on this a moment ago, Nick, but since. Um, our AI features are not HIPAA compliant at the moment. If your overall Help Scout account 
is uh, if you're on one of our sort of HIPAA plans, I should say, uh, that won't, you just won't see that option. So that's just one way we can make absolutely sure that everything is up to, up to date and up to speed. And in the future, if, you know, that becomes available, we will make that available to you in your account. Absolutely. Uh, for the summary, does that, can I work that on any conversation, even a conversation that came in before summaries existed as a feature? Indeed. Okay, fantastic. That's an answer. <laughs> um, Mark has asked, is there a way for us to like give feedback about the accuracy of the summary? Or if, if you're finding the summary is not quite right, how would you like us to get that feedback to you? Yeah, I think emailing us is the best way. I, Nikki might be able to speak deeper to this on a product level, but I think the accuracy is just going to continue to hopefully get better and better as we get deeper into this. Yeah, just so you all know, we're we're monitoring uh, the logs behind the scenes to try to Im improve accuracy as well. There's a lot of things we're doing behind the scenes. I think we did think about uh, doing some proactive feedback around Summarize. We might still offer that option. Uh, we just don't have it in the product today. We want to get it out as soon as possible. Uh, but there may be a way for you to offer some feedback on those moving forward, just so that we can maybe massage the prompts a little bit, make sure that we're we're getting the right things uh, to the LLM and can get more accurate data. So, but we're we're monitoring things, uh, a lot of different levers behind the scenes. Thank you. Uh, the AI summaries are they always in English? Yes. But I believe I've seen, and Nick, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe I've seen movement internally, I think, to uh, maybe offer language uh, variables on that as well. Yeah, that would make total sense to me. Uh, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know that it's in the product today, but it would make total sense that we should detect the language that the conversation is in and just go ahead and update the prompt with the language. So uh, that's another great a uh, small tweak that we'd be able to make sort of a fast follow. So, man, these folks should join our product team. <laughs> we have a couple of yeah, some positions. real specific questions. It's great. <laughs> uh, great. Let me see. So a few people asking about timelines. You sort of mentioned there, we don't really have a hard time on it, but when are we talking weeks or months for these features? Yeah, I, we would like to commit to weeks, not months. Uh, I, I got an update from the team today. We're full on. Uh, and and the, the the experience that that Allison demoed today is great, but believe it or not, we think it can be a lot better. And uh, there's a few tweaks that we want to make in order to to really polish it off and make sure that Assist is a, a delightful experience for everybody. So we're going to spend a few more weeks uh, making sure that it's fully polished. But uh, weeks, not months. That's that's the party line. And uh, are there plans to use AI like within Beacon specifically? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, as, as we, as it pertains to the previous slide I showed and, and enhancing the self-service experience, uh, you can imagine that Beacon is the first place that we would want to go uh, to try to enhance the self-service experience. So that that's most definitely work underway. Um, well, there's a few good feature requests in here. One of them is, could we use AI to help us convert an email conversation into a docs article to take that? Ah, That's yes, not... we've actually we've actually thought about that, uh, and it would be quite quite simple. Man, the product team is going to kill me for this whenever I say something <laughs> that's easy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, from a from a prompt standpoint, that's very possible to be able to say, "Hey, I want to turn this conversation into a doc," or this thread would probably be more appropriate. Uh, into a doc. So uh, these are ideas that that we've been having uh, by just using the tool ourselves. And we would encourage all of our customers as you come up with ideas like that, just let us know. Uh, chances are we, we've probably heard it before and are very excited to continue to kind of get momentum among the customer base for some of these features so we can make sure they're prioritized. But yeah, I think that would be magic. I, I love that idea. Uh, Melanie would like to know, is there a potential for, for people with, who do have HIPAA accounts that they could use it just in docs where it's not any specific privacy information? Uh, you know, I think that that would be, HIPAA is, is very uh, strict as, as this person probably knows very well. And so uh, we would probably not be able to do that just because uh, 
I, I have to give that some thought. I, I think we should we should take a note uh, and maybe even like if you want to email help at helpscout.com, I think that's an it's a really interesting question because there's other sort of HIPAA things that don't apply to docs itself. Uh, but I think it's worth considering. I think we would just need to to check with our security and privacy people to make sure I'm not speaking out of turn because I hmm. certainly want to be want to be strict about the BAA and uh, the fact that we don't have a BAA signed with OpenAI, I think is the biggest challenge. Uh, yeah. But as you know, I, I would assume that PII is not necessarily or PHI is not being used on a docs article. So you could probably free that up. And I'll make sure that every single question that has come in here gets passed to the right. If it's like, uh, I want to see this in the future, I'll make sure that that we get that to, to the team as well. Definitely. Yeah, it's all being captured for sure. Uh, a couple of just a couple of specifics on the summary. Um, once it's generated, you can't edit that, right? It's not an editable note. Correct. Correct. And um, it lives at the top. Everyone can see it who opens that conversation, who's internal, can see that. No, it's not just for that person who summarized. That's correct. It is right. visible to everybody and it's pinned to the top of the conversation. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Yeah, so you can run, uh, AI Assist can run on a whole document. It, you can highlight the whole document basically at once. You're not just doing paragraphs. Yes, perfect. Hey, Allison, something yeah. that uh, came up, and I'm trying to remember, I think the question just left my brain. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, so light users are able to generate a summary, correct? Like, that, I think I'm. That's my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the pretty sure that we can say the rest of our teammates might disagree. Because that, that's typically like a read-only type of user, but even light users can not only see, but they can create summaries. Uh, is there any, anything we can talk about the sentiment analysis? A couple of people asked this. Um, are we taking that into account or is there any way it can detect like this is an angry person and we want to do something with that? You know, we've done some experiments with sentiment analysis. Uh, I think we continue to 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 be curious about what you would do with with uh, with such a thing. Like, do is it important to to prioritize customers that are mean? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but those are some of the questions and curiosities that we've had. Uh, or, or that like, what sort of job would you try to accomplish? Like, how does this help you delight more customers? M maybe it's, it truly is like you want to create a workflow and uh, do something for angry customers, but we just haven't been quite clear on that use case. So sentiment analysis has been a, been a pretty straightforward thing uh, that uses a technology called nat natural language processing, which has been around for quite a while. So we could build it into the product. It's not, it's not difficult per se. Uh, it's just a matter of we're trying to get a sense of uh, what sort of jobs we would our customers would try to get done through that. And there is a degree of a built into the way that um, AI works in that it does a bit of tone matching almost of the inputted mm -hmm. conversation so that the answer you get back and the draft is going to match a little bit to the conversation that it's happening in, right? So it will vary from conversation to conversation in that way. And I will say there there are ways today with workflows that you can identify, you know, using your own data words that words or phrases that you find <laughs> come up when people are angry and then use a workflow to look for those words and then maybe like tag the conversation to float it up to the top of the queue in a specific way. So there are ways, that, you know, that you can do that today with workflows yeah. if that's something that's very uh, <laughs> top of mind for you. I've never thought of the concept of an R-rated workflow, but maybe that's it. <laughs> Well, I think it's pretty common. I've definitely yeah, so. created some myself. That's interesting. Um, summaries, another summarized question. It's per conversation, right? It, it, there's no way currently to summarize across a series of conversations with a customer. That's correct. Another feature request, I think. <laughs> All right. Um, then the summary, it won't update itself, right? You have to trigger that update at some point. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so we're just answering a few questions there. Uh, let me have a quick look. We're about to hit our, our kind of self-imposed time limit here. So if you've got last questions you want to sneak in, please do. I'm scrolling to the bottom now because I've realized a lot of people have been asking new questions as we've been answering them. Um, Vincent would like to know from a 
if he upgrades the account, if you have to upgrade your whole account to have access for everyone will have access to AI or is it possible to do it like per person? That's correct. It's it's all at an, on an account basis uh, yep. right now. Uh, so that's just for summarize. When assist is out there in the wild, that will be available to everyone on all accounts. Correct. And can you speak to plans for Beacon? That's quite a general question from Sam, but I think an interesting one. Yeah, we we probably touched on that as far as I uh, am comfortable uh, talking about at this point. <laughs> uh, but I, I definitely think that there are use cases for us to apply the magic of LLMs to the Beacon self-service experience, particularly. Uh, we're not going to make it any harder to get in touch with a human. I don't think that's actually a way to delight more customers. But uh, ultimately, we, we think that the self-service experience can become much more robust, and we're very excited about that. Okay. Shout out to Beacon self-service mode, which is one of my favorite features of all of HealthCap. Right. So right. if you aren't using it already, email us because I would love to talk to you about using. <laughs> Allison, just quickly explain what self-service mode, just so everybody knows. Yeah. So for a lot of folks who want to maybe your boss or someone is, you know, wants to sort of get you to go down the chat bot sort of avenue. I think self-service mode is a, is a really good application of that. So when your beacon is in self-service mode, the only thing that comes up at first are docs articles. So folks have to search and help themselves and it will only present uh, com, um, uh, contact options if they have an unsuccessful search or just not able to find what they're looking for. So to really cut down on incoming email volume, if that's something that's important to you, but obviously still serving a good experience to folks um, through your help articles, it's a really, really great way to do that. And I think the beacon itself actually handles it really well also. Uh, thank you. So. Just to recap, a couple of people have asked, yes, we're recording this. We will put the video together. We'll get it out to you. You can share it with whoever you like to share it with. That's all fine. Um, one last <laughs> feature request. Mm, let me see. Let me please get <laughs> live customer. There are a few specific questions in here. So as we go through, as Alison said, we're going to answer some of these. Some of these are answers just specifically to you, and we'll try and get those to you as soon as we can. Yep. Um, other requests, I'm going to call that the end of the questions. I want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Alison, for attending and, and helping us today. Thank you for everybody who's watching. There's quite a lot of you today. We appreciate all your questions. As I say, the recording will be sent out to everybody who's registered, even the people who couldn't turn up live. Um, and if we have additional information that we want to share along with that video, we will put it in the email or we'll find another way to get it to you. Uh, and all of the excellent suggestions, I'm sure we'll go back to the product teams internally for their review as well. Uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate that too. Easiest way to get in touch with anyone at HelpScout is to go via helpscout.com slash contact or email help at helpscout.com directly. We always love to hear from you. Can't get enough of that. Thank you so much. Uh, we hope we see you again at another one of these very soon. See you all.